Hey guys and uh, welcome back to another video. Last time we found out that there was a crack in the head and uh, now it's actually time to uh, take the head off and get it to a machine shop where they will uh, see if they can weld it and uh, seal the crack again and make the head fully usable again. And to do that we are going to um, take off a bunch of stuff from the engine, free the head from uh, all the components that are stuck in the engine bay and then take the head off and uh, I'll show you step by step how to do this so you can do it yourself. And uh, this isn't a very, very hard job. So uh, this is something you definitely can do yourself. I've uh, done the V8 head gaskets on my uh, Rover V8. It was the Discovery 2. And I did that just outside on the, on the driveway. So um, that works. And I've also done the 200 TDI head gasket. Just did that on the lawn. It took a few hours. And um, yeah, the TD5 isn't much more complicated. I actually have the Haynes manual here. And we are going to follow the steps in the Haynes manual. And that way I'll also show you how easy it is to follow this and to use this. I'm not sponsored or anything, but this is just a great tip for if you want to do work on your Land Rover yourself. Uh, just get a Haynes manual. This one says Discovery and it's for the diesel. So um, it's for the TD5 and the engines are basically the same in the Defender as in the Discovery. So this job will also be for the Discovery. Head removal and head gaskets repair but on the discovery the engine bay is actually tighter <laughs> so it's 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 a bit different but uh, it's still the same engine so yeah we'll uh, start with uh, reading what the instructions say and then we'll do them step by step okay so we'll uh, start with uh, reading the instructions and as you can see here cylinder head removal inspection and refitting and disconnect the battery negative lead yes we've done that Undo the fasteners to remove the engine undershield. If you still have that on, just uh, take it off. I've done it on mine. Drain the cooling system. So that's something we'll need to do. Then it says remove the cylinder head cover as described. And that's uh, what I call the rocker cover. We've already removed that. So I'll show you. It's the rocker cover on here. It is held on with eight millimeter bolts uh, all around and there's an air hose going there so that's the only thing you need to to take off to remove the cover and then you should remove the cooling fan viscous coupling that fan is placed on this pulley and you will actually need or well, you don't need special tools but uh, the special tools really help to get the fan off and i've shown them in um, in another video here we have those. The left one goes around some bolts to keep the pulley in place. And then the right one goes around the nut uh, securing the fan. And that way, when you hold the left one tight, you can use the right one to uh, loosen the fan. We'll do number three, drain the cooling system, as described in chapter one. So then you can go to chapter one and see how the cooling system is drained. Then we'll have to go to cooling system, coolant renewal. To drain the cooling system, first cover the expansion tank cap with a wet, yeah, just open it uh, when the car isn't hot. Position a suitable container beneath the radiator. Open the drain plug access cover in the engine undershield, but yeah, we've taken that off. Then unscrew the drain plug and allow the coolant to drain into the container. Let's get ourselves a proper container. That one. And get under it and remove the uh, coolant drain plug. Okay, so there we have the coolant drain plug. It's this plug right here. And it's connected to a big uh, coolant hose. Just wait until the coolant gets cold because otherwise you can actually burn yourself. So uh, let's get a tool to uh, Get that out and don't forget to open the um, expansion tank, take the cap off. Okay. 
And this is the uh, coolant draining plug. Uh, now always remember to wear eye protection because there was a lot of splashing. Okay, and while the um, coolant system is draining, we can uh, remove some intake pipes. We want to remove this intake pipe. It goes from the air filter and goes around to the turbocharger. So uh, we're going to remove a plug that is right under here. It goes to the uh, mass airflow sensor. And then we can open these clips right here. And then there is one hose clamp on the turbocharger. And we'll just use a flat blade screwdriver and undo that clamp. There we go. And now we can pull this whole thing off. And that frees up a lot of space around the intake manifold and makes it easier to lift the, the whole head off as well. Next we'll have to do uh, turbo. So we'll undo the banjo bolt, that's the banjo fitting that's there in the middle. And that's just one bolt. And then there is, is a pipe connected to it and that has two washers on each side. Those washers should always be uh, replaced when you take this off. And then we'll also do the three bolts that connect the turbocharger to the uh, exhaust manifold. And this bio bolt is a uh, 14 millimeter and it is a oil pipe so it's a uh, it's it goes from the engine block up to the turbo make sure that the uh, turbo gets enough lubrication take that out and take good care of it there are two washes and they should be replaced okay and now we'll do the um, bolts on the turbocharger and there are three one isn't visible and two are up top and these uh, usually are 13 millimeter nuts and they can be really tight and sometimes a ratchet spanner won't fit in between them so then you'll just have to use a normal one okay and now that the turbocharger nuts are loose you can actually move the turbocharger around so um, we'll do that. We'll have to order a new exhaust manifold gasket to the turbo. But now the uh, exhaust manifold is uh, loose from the turbo. And the exhaust manifold can actually lift off with the head. And that makes for easier removal of the uh, exhaust manifold uh, when the head is off. And you can actually easily reach all the bolts. Okay, so now that the turbo is loose and uh, the uh, coolant has been drained and we've taken the air pipe off, uh, we can now start to disconnect the um, plugs and also take the bolts off for the wires that connect to the head because we want to take all the plugs off and same goes for the um, glow plug wires that are inside of there as well as the um, fuel temperature sensor and a few more wires. So just make sure you know where all these wires go. That's going to be the next step. And I always put the bolts back where I took them out as soon as I, I have the opportunity for it. In this case, I'll just put them back. Okay, and then we'll start unplugging some stuff and get the wires out of the way. And just uh, get the wires out of the way. I'm lifting the head off with the intake manifold and the exhaust manifold still fitted. So I just have to make sure that the wires cables are not going in between the intake manifold and the head. And now it's a question of taking the glow plug wires off. A long nose plier with a bent, bent nose basically. Bought this to the ignition coil wires on the um, Rover V8. Yep, and they work. And they also have to be pushed out of the way.
That's the glow plug wires removed. And now I'm going to do the fuel temperature sensor on the uh, fuel pressure regulator. Yes, and then we also have the MAP sensor. I think it's called Mass Absolute Pressure. And that actually reads the pressure in the intake manifold. You just have to disconnect a plug. You can leave the sensor. Okay, after you've removed all the wiring, it actually tells you to um, disconnect the EGR valve and vacuum lines and stuff. But on mine, the EGR valve is already... Uh, I've put it in the trash. Uh, so I have a blank to EGR and the vacuum lines are plugged and they are back here. I've just uh, routed them so they're not in the way of anything uh, and uh, plugged them. If you have an EGR valve on yours, then you should remove the vacuum lines. There are one or two vacuum lines on there uh, and that's basically it. And after you've either uh, uh, disconnected the EGR valve uh, vacuum lines or just not done anything like I've done, uh, then we'll uh, loosen, loosen up this hose clamp and take the air pipe off. There we go. Here's the uh, intake manifold. And down here we have a fuel cooler. So there is actually diesel fuel going into here via some fuel lines. And there's coolant going into here. And the coolant then uh, lowers the temperature of the diesel. We now have to disconnect the coolant lines. And after that we can disconnect the fuel lines. There we go, the front one off. And this is the fuel line that goes from the fuel tank to this uh, cooler. Okay, so now we've uh, taken off the fuel lines and covered them up. Now we can take off the um, coolant pipe, it's at the back. Yes, and the lower one is filled with coolant, so uh, make sure you put the, um, the container underneath. There we go. Now that's all the fuel lines and coolant lines uh, taken off of the uh, fuel cooler. Now we can move up front. Okay, now we're at the front of the engine and uh, we are supposed to take the uh, vacuum line uh, bolt out. So we're going to do that. And after that we're going to the EGR cooler. And that's a uh, 14 millimeter. And then we'll pull it out, wiggle it back and forth. And uh, there's a rubber seal on here, and that should be replaced too. And then when we're here, we are going to take off the alternator bracket bolt, the top and bottom. And uh, you're supposed to take the bottom one, loosen that one, so you can actually move the bracket and take this one out completely. There we go, that's loose because it's uh, it is fitted to the um, to the head and we have to take off everything uh, that's connected to the head uh, that stays in the engine bay when we lift the head off okay so that's off and because i've uh, loosened it down there you can actually move it around okay so um now there's a bit of a difference some engines have the egr cooler and some don't uh, my earlier TD5, uh, the Defender 130, didn't have one. One of my Discovery 2's TD5 had it and uh, two of them didn't. So that's, uh, that's a bit uh, different depending on what car you have. But I'll show you if you have one and if you don't, then uh, you don't have to worry about this. So you have to disconnect this coolant hose here and the coolant hose down there. And then we'll disconnect the... Uh, EGR pipes as well. On mine it's blanked here. If you still have your EGR valve here, then there will be a pipe just like this on this side too, connecting there. So take those off, take the coolant lines off, and then you should be able to take the um, cooler itself off the head. OK, 
Okay, so now we've taken these two bolts off. Okay, now we'll take the uh, cooler off. And uh, it's just a 10 millimeter bolt here. And then it's supposed to be a 10 millimeter bolt on the bottom. We'll see. Let's see if we can. And there's supposed to be a third one. So again, to show you the position of all the bolts, there's a bolt up top and it's a 10 mil. And then we have one bolt in the corner. It's also 10 mil. And then we have one stud and there's a nut on there. And that's a 30 millimeter. And now we can actually take this little thing off. And uh, we're slowly making our way around the engine. And now we're just going to take off some uh, coolant pipes and I'm going to take off this uh, big hose uh, mounted with a clamp there and then this pipe actually goes to the back and is mounted to the head with two 10 millimeter bolts. So we'll take that off and we don't have to disconnect this pipe from anywhere. There we go. Now that's, that's quite loose. And now we can put the bolts back in again. Here you can actually see some pink and yellow gross stuff and that indicates that there's been uh, some coolant leaking here so you get that when you have a coolant leak okay now that we've taken the top heater hose off we are going to take these two bolts out and that's a, there's a nut on one and there's a bolt in the other and uh, this secures the cylinder head to the uh, block so we'll take those two out Okay, so now that we've taken off the, all the accessories, all the things that stay in the engine bay when we lift the head off, now it's time to actually lock the uh, timing in place. So uh, the Haynes manual describes this very well. It also shows you that if you don't have any special tools, you can make your own. So I've actually done that. And they're saying that you should get two drill bits, two drill bits, a hydraulic flange basically coupling it shows you very clearly in the book there you can see uh, one of the illustrations um, but you need a six and a half millimeter drill and an eight millimeter drill bit and then a pneumatic coupling so um, i've just taken this off one of the accessories for my compressor i uh, had some extra i cut off the um, quick connection so that the eight millimeter drill fits through perfectly. That's, that's all you need. So now we are going to use a spanner. It's a 24 millimeter ratchet I'm using. We put this on the crankshaft pulley. So the lowest point of the engine. And uh, that way we can turn the engine around. And we have to turn it until we get to top that center of cylinder number one. So uh, it also shows in the book how to do that. So if you have a hinge manual, it's really helpful. But I'll show you uh, myself and then you won't have to read this book. So here we have the timing chain and uh, some of it is exposed when you take off the rocker cover. What we are looking for are two colored chain links and these should be matched with on this uh, wheel. We can see a groove. Uh, not right now, uh, but we are going to spin the engine just like this until we find a groove in the cog wheel. And then we also have to find the two colored links and match them together. So as you can see here, marked yellow, there is actually a groove in this wheel. And we need this groove to be up top here together with two colored links. So we are going to turn the engine until both the colored links appear together with the uh, groove.
And there you can see it. Now we finally got the groove and the two colored links together in the same spot. There you can see them all together. The bronze colored links together with the groove in the wheel. And that way we can now take our special tool, a six and a half millimeter drill bit, and we can put it in the hole that is behind the chain, just like that. And it's supposed to go in there and slot into, into a groove. So we'll just have to turn it a little and uh, make it fit. When you're doing this yourself, you can actually see the groove behind it. So you know exactly when you're in. And when it's in, like now, I can actually not turn the engine around at all. So that's the drill bit in place. And now we're at exactly top that center for cylinder number one. So with this uh, drill bit in place and we've locked the timing, uh, now we can go under the car and lock the flywheel in place. And uh, we do that using our special uh, uh, pneumatic uh, thread tool and this eight millimeter drill which we put in between. And um, it's just a little bolt on the flywheel housing that we screw out and then we screw this threaded piece in and then we can stick the uh, drill bit in place. Okay, so here we have a view of the bell housing and there is, that's the bolt that we're talking about. So it's placed on the passenger side for left and right vehicles. It's really easy to find. And I had to spend some time earlier to try and take it, make it loose. So uh, as you can see, my bolt is a bit rounded off, but I got it loose in the end. Now we're going to take it off. And in there, I don't know if you can actually see in there, but you can see some cogs from the flywheel. We are going to thread our little piece in, just like that. And the drill, the, the drill bit is just loose. But we're going to put that in, and then the drill. I stick it in there, and I'm going to tape this so it will stay in place. And that way the flywheel can't spin either. Okay, now with, the, um, with all the timing locked in place and the engine locked as well, we can uh, now remove the timing chain tensioner and some other bolts. Okay, now the timing chain tensioner is here and I'm going to use a big uh, wrench to take it off. There we go, that's the uh, timing chain tensioner. There's a little uh, seal on here and that should be replaced, a copper washer. Okay, and after we've taken off the timing chain tensioner, then we'll do this Allen bolt and it's an eight millimeter. And make sure you get it in properly so you don't round it off. Go, that's that, eight millimeter Allen bolt. Okay, and when, uh, when we've taken the timing chain tensioner and the Allen bolt out, it is time to try and take this seal off. And just be careful, uh, the seal is going to be replaced always, uh, but be careful not to damage the aluminium. And now it's time to take the three bolts that hold the camshaft to the timing chain wheel. Whoop. And these are 13 millimeter bolts. So just take them off. They, they come off quite easily. And these bolts, I think, should also be replaced every time you do this job. There we go. Okay, and now this wheel is loose 
from the camshaft. So now we can just l let it rest uh, inside of there. Now that everything is loose and we've gotten to the point where the timing chain is uh, loose and secure, we can actually start taking the head bolts out. So yeah, these are a special E10 uh, socket. So it's like a, a, a reverse Torx. So we're going to take them out by a reverse sequence. So here's the bolt tightening sequence for the head bolts. We are going to do this the reverse way. So we are going to start with 12, 11, 10, 9 uh, and so on and so on. And take them off uh, carefully and slowly. Okay, so we are going to start with number 12. And then we have number 11, so left rear corner, and then number 11 is right rear corner. And then we have 10, it's the front right, and then 9. Front left, eight is here, seven, Okay, so now that uh, we've removed all the head bolts, the head is actually loose from the engine block. So now um, I'm going to call a buddy and get some help lifting this off. I've left the, both the inlet and uh, exhaust manifold on and uh, the head itself is quite heavy already. So I'm going to um, get the help from a buddy to uh, lift it off so we don't damage anything uh, on the head. If I try to uh, lift this off by myself then I might, I, might, I might just damage the whole head and I still have to buy a new one. Okay, so now that the head is loose it is time to actually lift it off. And uh, as you can see here on my workbench I've uh, prepared a soft and flat surface, nothing underneath, and it's clean so that the head can rest on it. The Haynes manual doesn't say you have to take the injectors off, but I've done that anyways because I had to diagnose them. But a good tip when you take the head off is to in take the injectors off as well, because they actually stick out on the bottom of the head. So if you take the head off with the injector still in place, just remember to not put it down flat. You have to lean it to the side or something uh, to make sure that the injector tips do not touch anything and get destroyed. So yeah, bra. Då lyfter vi. Ja. Oj, här är nog ska vi se här. Ja. Jag har den här. Så. Okej. Okay. Okay. Yes, vi lägger den på det vita. Bra. Sådär. Wow. Snyggt. Nice. Ah. Yes. Ja, det är klart. Och då blir oljan lika tunn som diesel, alltså vatten. So there we have it guys. The uh, cylinder head is finally removed. I really hope that this video helped you. This will only be a part one of 
I think a three byte series or so. So this is part one, how to remove the cylinder head. And uh, I really hope it helped you to get the courage to do it yourself because it, it really isn't complicated. It's just important to follow every step. When lifting the head off, you actually notice if you have forgotten to take anything off. So then you just put it down again, take that thing off and uh, try and lift it again. So in the uh, coming videos, you can expect a video where I show show you uh, everything to take off the head before uh, leaving it uh, at a machine shop for example. I'm also going to order a bunch of parts so I can, uh, I can show you the uh, screen recording of everything you need to order and uh, then some preparations before putting it back together. I think that uh, the putting uh, everything back together video will be its own video. So getting the cylinder head back on the engine block and get everything mounted properly. So that will be its own video too. So I'm thinking that there's gonna be at least two more videos on uh, the cylinder head. So yeah, I really hope you like. If you did, please subscribe if you haven't already, because there's going, going to be a lot more Land Rover content uh, in the future. And uh, please share this video too with uh, everyone who owns a TD5 or is thinking about getting one. Uh, because you shouldn't be scared about uh, this job. Uh, the TD5s are known for cracking heads or um, even the early ones have head gasket problems because of the plastic dowels. This job is something that uh, a lot of TD5 owners will have to do. So I hope this will uh, help a lot of people. So yeah, just... Uh, like, subscribe and share this video and uh, I, I'm really grateful that you're watching this. So uh, we'll see you in the next one.